The Sonos Arc and Samsung Q950A are arguably two of the best soundbars in 2021. But with a higher price tag than the Q950, is the full Sonos setup really worth the extra money? Let's find out. Hey team, I'm Josh. Now before we start, I've put together individual reviews on both of these systems, so if one of them tickles your fancy, I'd highly suggest you go check that out once you've finished here. There's also a sound test at the end of this video, which attempts to give you a sound comparison between these two systems. Now I know it's not perfect as there's a bit of YouTube compression and it depends on what headphones you're using, but it gives you a rough idea of what it will sound like. The Sonos Arc Home Theater Bundle comprises of the Sonos Arc Soundbar, which is $7.99, the Gen 3 Sonos Sub, which is $6.99, and a pair of One SLs, which is $3.58. This brings it to a total of $18.56. You can purchase these as separate items if you prefer to do it that way and spread it over a longer time or you can just buy it as one bundle. The Samsung Q950A comes as a single product which includes the soundbar, subwoofer and two rear speakers. You can quite often find it on a special, like now it's $14.98 which is you know a few hundred dollars off. Around Black Friday or other holidays you may even find it cheaper than that. Sonos, much like Apple, hardly ever go on sale, and even if they do, the discounts will be very minimal. For that reason, they hold on to their value really well. Samsung, on the other hand, bring out soundbars every year, so once this cycle's done, it'll drop in value a lot. I'll leave you links below for the current pricing on each of these soundbars. The Q950 is an 11.1.4 channeled system. You've got 11 horizontal speakers, one subwoofer, and four upward firing drivers, two in the soundbar and one in each of the rear speakers. The full Sonos setup technically is a 7.1.2 channeled system, but the way Sonos configure it, when you add the rear speakers, it cuts the side firing drivers, so it's really a 5.1.2 channeled system. The amount of channels the soundbar has doesn't always tell the full story, so wait around to the sound quality section to hear if it makes a difference. The Arc is made out of premium plastic and is available in either black or white. Samsung has made a more traditional rectangular soundbar that's covered in a fabric cloth and you can only purchase it in black. Both soundbars are on the larger side, with the Q950 being 10 centimeters longer than the Arc and they really are suited for TVs 55 inches and up. Sonos has an Ethernet and HDMI E arc and also comes with an HDMI to optical adapter. Q950 steps that up and allows for two HDMI in ports as well as an E arc and dedicated optical. The bonus of having extra HDMI ports in the soundbar is that the arc port takes one up from your TV. So if you generally run out of HDMI ports, then these will replace it and give you an extra one. The Sonos arc on the other hand takes that arc port and doesn't replace it so you're down to three in most cases. Both bars offer Dolby Atmos support and have upward firing drivers. Samsung again takes it a step further with DTSX, which is commonly used on Blu-ray discs. Even if you use Blu-rays with the Arc, you'll still be able to get a surround sound audio format, it just won't utilize the height speakers. On the front, you have lights to indicate they're receiving a signal. The Arcs can be turned off in the app, and the Samsung has a screen on the top for further tuning. If you have a Samsung TV, then the Q950 will give you the volume level on the screen. Both soundbars can be wall mounted. The Q950 comes with those brackets, but the Arc you have to purchase separately for $79. Samsung has used the same subwoofer as last year, which contains an 8 inch driver and has a very boxy look to it, which is pretty standard now amongst most TV manufacturers. Sonos, on the other hand, have gone the more classy route with a glossy outside and two force cancelling drivers which achieves a more powerful and lower bass response. This is the secret sauce that makes Sonos systems sound so good. You can also add a second Sonos sub, which is really good for larger rooms. If there's a dead spot, you can just add a subwoofer in there and then it evens it all out. The Samsung subwoofer is no slouch, but it's nothing compared to the Sonos sub. Samsung has three drivers in each of its rear speakers. It has a forward, side and upward firing. The Sonos One SLs have a woofer and a tweeter which are both forward facing. Unfortunately there's no upward firing drivers on the One SLs, hopefully that comes soon. I found the Sonos Ones could get a lot louder, which is more beneficial if you need to put the speakers far away from your seating position. The other thing to note is that each Sonos One can hold its own as a dedicated speaker. Neither system come with their own wall brackets for the rear speakers, which is a bit of a shame. 
but Sonos you can purchase their official brackets and stands and the nice thing about that is that they match the color of the speaker you've purchased. For the Samsung you can buy universal stands and mounts and for that I'll leave a few options down below for you. Both soundbars offer support for Amazon Alexa, AirPlay 2 and Spotify. Samsung also includes Bluetooth connectivity and Sonos has Google Assistant. Please note that Sonos does not support Bluetooth connectivity. So if you're in the Android camp and you're wanting to play a specific music service through the soundbar, then make sure it's either available in the Sonos app or you can get it on your TV and play it through HDMI. If you're in the Apple camp, then either system will work perfectly as through AirPlay, whatever sound would normally come through your phone will come through the soundbar with no trouble at all. The other thing you may want to think about is whether you want to add speakers to other rooms later on and have a multi-room audio system. Sonos is the best in class with this and whether you're an Android or Apple user, you can just add those rooms together easy as in the app. If you're an Apple user and go down the Samsung route, then you can still achieve something very similar with AirPlay 2. Both systems have app support. Samsung uses the SmartThings and Sonos uses the S2. The SmartThings app is not specifically designed just for speakers as it incorporates all of Samsung's smart devices into one area. There's a bunch of different features within the SmartThings app that allows you to change an equalizer of bass and treble, change sound modes, inputs, bass and voice enhancement, as well as a night mode feature. On the bar you can change individual speaker levels, but you can't do this through the app. The S2 app is very similar in that it allows you to change a bass and treble equalizer, sub, height and surround audio levels, start a true play tuning and set up a universal remote control. Also Sonos does not allow you to change individual channel levels, which is a bit of a shame. Each system has its own unique way of tuning for your room. An iPhone is required for the Sonos to do its true play tuning, whereas Samsung do it from a microphone on the bar. Samsung's was definitely the easiest, but I found the biggest improvement from Sonos's as you actually get up and move around so it gets a really good map of the space. The biggest downside to Sonos is that you have to use an iPhone or Apple device to be able to do this tuning. Currently neither of them allow you to create your own sound mode preset, which would be a really nice thing to be able to do in the future, as you can make one for music and then another one for movies. Now we've come to how does it actually sound? Well first of all, to do these tests, there was two of us, so that we got differing opinions and we were able to collate them to put them in this video. Second of all, we used two different rooms. So this smaller one here is about a three by four meter box. And then the larger room is much more open and it has a kitchen on one side and heaps of furniture. So most lounges will be somewhere in between those two. We used a variety of different music and movies. So we got a very wide range of different sounds and these were our results. These two soundbars for music are very different. The Samsung was a lot more detailed. So for music that is orchestra based and you want to be able to hear individual notes from the violin or the piano, the Samsung was better at producing that sound for me. Whereas the Sonos was better at giving me a bigger, bolder sound. So for songs such as uh, Skyfall by Adele or the Formula One theme song, those are designed for movies, so the Arc was able to transport me there better than the Samsung was. It all comes down to what kind of music you prefer. If you enjoy sitting down and properly listening to a song, then again that Samsung with the better detail is probably going to do a better job for you. But if you enjoy genres like electronic, R&B, hip hop, you know those songs require a lot of oomph, especially from that subwoofer then the Sonos Arc is probably the better way to go in that case. It is a very interesting one between the two because they do give off a very different sound. So I would highly suggest if you can to pop down to the shop and have a listen to both of them together and just see which one fits more within the music that you like. It also made a big difference which service I was using to stream the music from. I started with Spotify and then I changed to Apple Music and that made a big difference in the sound stage of both of the soundbars. It opened up a lot more and I was able to more individually hear what was going on within that music piece. When it comes to movies, if you're into action then Sonos is definitely better because of that deeper sub. You're able to feel the impact of those explosions or gunshots as opposed to just hearing it. That's another thing is the Sonos, because it has two force cancelling drivers, 
it's able to get really low in the bass response as opposed to the Samsung, which it does a good job, but I had to max out the bass throughout the whole movie and it gave me plenty, but it wasn't anything close to what the Sonos was able to reproduce. Voice clarity on both of these soundbars was excellent and I was easily able to pick up what they were trying to say. One thing I would suggest with the Samsung is turn up the center channel a couple times as that gives you even clearer dialogue. With the Sonos you can just turn on the speech enhancement in the app and that does a really great job. If you mainly want to buy this for movies and then add a little bit of music at the end, then Sonos is the way to go. If you mainly want to have this for music and a little bit of TV watching, then I'd probably steer more into that Samsung realm unless, again, you want bigger, bolder sound all the way through. The other thing to note is when I'm talking about this, I'm comparing one straight after another, whereas once you buy either system, you're only comparing it to whatever you were last using, which I'm guessing for a lot of people was either an older soundbar or TV speakers. So in that case, it's going to be way better than what you already had. Both of these systems did a great job once I'd listened to them for a while and I kind of got used to their sound. I watched a movie on the Samsung in the main house and by the end of it, like it was an action movie so it gave a lot of explosions and I was super happy with the sound. But then when I came back to my Sonos Arc then I was like, oh, it could give me a little bit more. But that's only because I'm comparing the two together. But for you, once you get it, I'm sure you'll be happy as with whichever one you go for. Now here's a quick sound test between the two bars in my small room here. I hope that sound test was helpful for you and giving you an idea of what it could sound like in your room. With that, as I mentioned earlier, I've done individual reviews on both of these soundbars, which you can watch here, and they're far more in depth than what I can do in this video. Also, if you have any questions about either system, then please leave them down below. That's all from me. See you guys soon.